I have the first question, which I wish to ask to one of the speakers exercising my rights of the moderator. I would like to, uh, to speculate with uh, some speakers from Manarig. Dion, did you understand the last speech? And what is your opinion of it? What could you comment? Can, could this actually uh, be usable for the things that you do? Could this be applicable in what you do? Well, I would have to say the following. After the 25th slide, this uh, presentation became too fast and I couldn't follow up. But, it, uh, but what I liked uh, was that uh, the discussion was about the human being, about a person. We talk about, yes, building streets and so on and so forth, but yes, it addressed people. What I understood was uh, from the presentations of this section was that objects, undestroyable objects need to be placed between these buildings. These could be some art valuables and then they could serve their functions. I would not agree to the fact that space is not used. There are various examples. For example, in the Western countries, uh, parks are full on every sunny day. We simply don't have the feeling of legitimization that, uh, or we don't have the feeling that we can go out there and we can, uh, we can do things. There was an article recently in the printed press that uh, uh, people can go and grill meat on a sunny day. You simply have to observe the basic safety principles. And if I'd say this to a friend, then most probably my friends would ask back, well, is it allowed to do so? I would like to use my opportunity to, to chip in. And Alexander, this wasn't meant as an insult to you. But you maybe you simply have uh, two, uh, so to say, controversial approaches. I don't know who of you could reply this, but my question is as follows. What you did was, if I can ask you, if I understood correctly, you did not ask people what what they wanted. They, you simply bought, brought them things and gave them as a present. Can, do you think that luck or bliss can be submitted this way? The answer. Hello. It is important uh, to begin with a fundamental premise that, no, this is not true. People were not delivered a stack of pellets and told that now they're going to have 10 benches in place. This project instead was aimed at the process itself, as a process of how do we arrive at a state when something has changed in our uh, sur uh, surrounding environment, and, and how do we arrive with the fact that we get there with our, uh, with our portable toilet and with our stack of pellets. People were invited to show up and to engage. And that's why you saw that uh, children became engaged into drawing the, the arrangement of these pellets. Cities. And uh, what I find, actually, I find uh, uh, Riga's mass housing estates are, has a um, higher variety than uh, in Vilnius. In Vilnius, it's only Lesbine who are like significant, but if you look uh, in the general picture, it's only um, gray buildings. Uh, what about height? Um, I think um, uh, lower buildings are better, and uh, lower and denser pattern is is a better solution. But I think it's uh, it's possible to to fix both low rise and high rise you just need um, you just need good approach and good ideas or comment uh, with regard to my riga thank you very much 
for indeed implementing a very nice uh, approach, taking into account the specifics of uh, our country. And if I may, I would call it an evolution of vandalism, uh, what happened with your furniture. Uh, or well, the benches and and and, uh, and outdoors uh, articles or items. Uh, from your experience, um, how would you see the future? Uh, would you expect any improvements? You know, people not vandalizing or not destroying uh, those items, uh, and those. Uh, would you expect those items to become a part of the? Uh, outdoor space, starting from minor shape. Uh, a major sort of ensemble out of uh, 50 pellets. And I think that uh, we should have really invincible, if you will, articles or items, massive wood, uh, or wooden objects or constructions or structures, uh, and they will survive. But you have to start with consensus, really, and that would lead to accountability, and and and, and that would help us avoid any vandalism or destroying these things. Yeah, if I may, I would like to add that this project was, you know, promoting. Uh, various local initiatives, we didn't want to introduce something that should last there forever. That was by no means our intention. It was just a way to show people that you can do something, you know, if you're active. And there are also some administrative barriers, you know, uh, but we start from the grassroots level and so we start to sort of activate local people first. There's another wonderful example of how this can be done, like in Zolitude that we did in one of the yards. Uh, along with what we did, there was one of the fathers who made um, um, created um, a sandbox uh, in the backyard, and he did it on his own, and police didn't sort of uh, prosecute him. Uh, I, I suppose there was an agreement between the parents who had small children, you know, to have the sandbox there. And the sandbox, you know, was built there because they, they, they reached a consensus. They agreed. So. I think uh, what we have heard in the last session was um, exactly that, what we are like have been expected, that, that we need such a conference, that we need such a meeting, that we finally come together again after many years and start really to discuss seriously measures and, and uh, whatever we call it, uh, ideas, uh, strategies. I think about that we will later on hear quite enlightening things from Sasha. But um, I'm, I'm like very much puzzled because, um, or probably we three from the Urban Institute, because we very, very uh, we had a very human approach. Thank you a lot for that. Um, we're doing that also together with you for the last months and years. Something is happening. We are discussing about designs. We are discussing about uh, collaborative designs. We're doing all of this, but I'm 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 like missing that. Um, what I'm like thinking uh, has been the success measure in all the countries where those changes, those urban shifts, have been taking place. It always has been. For sure, there was a very important legal background, which was important. I think we have to develop the legal framework not a lot. There are missing many, many tools, but most of all, like taking the success stories in, in um, Germany, so East Berlin, like when they started in East Berlin in 92, to like shift around 150,000 flats. They did it with neighborhood management but real serious social work patterns. And they were sustaining for it until today, so they are still existing for the last 20 years. So when do we start to talk about serious social planning, meaning action in the area, not only by participation, by questioning and so on, but um, when do we start really to take in consideration that we have to get active with a policy carried out by also the municipalities and that we have to install structures that are really working at place. Um, maybe I would very much like to have an answer from Alexander as he's the one who really had a very good and very interesting presentation in this respect. Yes, I totally agree with you that we are totally missing this uh, institute of social workers. I agree, but um, the only thing what we can do now is actually try to listen to, to the people, but on the other hand, I would, um, 
uh, stress the importance uh, in any kind of collaborative design process. Actually, the process of design, which is much more cognitive in, in the nature. So, uh, in a way, uh, we have to we have to understand this this means what people have actually and. Uh, um, Basically, uh, people know themselves already what to do, and, uh, but um, yeah, we have to listen more, I guess, for now. But that's my main message. <laughs> Alexander, uh, it was very interesting your uh, approach, and uh, I also know uh, Alexander very well, Christopher Alexander. I mean. Have you met him? <laughs> I did meet him. I uh, also worked with his pattern. What I missed in your uh, approach is, is you are only working on special level. And uh, already this morning I said uh, we need more sustainable development. We need a mix of functions. We need more uh, commercial uh, working places and so on. And uh, Alexander also has patterns. Yeah, I just can have a brief comment. Any better language is an A better language, so you can write yourself for you know for the issues you find important. So stājās un man ir sākumā īsti komentārs par mana Rīga, kur es arī aizbraucu un, un piedalījos Torņa kalnā. Tā bēdīguma sajūta par tām saskaņošanām, jo gribat vai ne, arī skolā nu ir kontroldarbi, nu viņi nepatīk, bet viņi ir. Tāpat tās pilsētā ir tests, you may like them or not, uh, but you have to take the test and the same concerns, you know, getting all the permits and all the documents straight, you know, from the, with the municipality. And in San Sarkandago we have Alex Square, for example. So the Sarkandago Development um, Society decided uh, after a number of meetings that they should develop a design for the Alexander Square and the next year we might uh, have this Alexander Square in place it will be built out of concrete out of you know sort of basic materials and this is a grassroots initiative that will uh, you know come to fruition hopefully next year now what concerns those who are building houses in the backyards uh, of the residential area so what is your motivation to build a house inside a yard, amid a yard, and provide 900 departments when there are so many buildings falling apart in other parts of the, the city? To whom would you like to address this question? To the girls. Well, the girls who suggested, well, the Lithuanian representative suggested, and also the architects from the Arts Academy, they suggested that we should build new buildings in the backyards. I have grown up uh, in backyards up to the age 11 uh, in a month of uh, five, and I I have my, you know, sort of personal experience. Then, you know, then I can re redirect this question to mother because I had a similar question in my mind. The same, you know, old question, build or not to build. Well, you see, at the moment, of the past couple of years, nothing is being built, so no housing developments are taking place. A couple of ye uh, years ago, when I was an architectural student myself, a lot of buildings were built, and they were built without really sense or purpose, if I may say so. And my intuition told me that everything that has been built in the meadows uh, outside, in the suburbs of Riga, or the high rises that have been built in residential houses, uh, in residential areas in Riga, that might have been built uh, in the backyards of residential areas to sort of strengthen or reinforce the 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 the, the urban tapestry or fabric uh, would uh, help us to reinvigorate uh, these residential areas and it would also uh, make uh, the developers responsible for the backyard where they are building not only for their territory or the building site that they are responsible for so that would be very good for the residential areas and now that we have sort of a breather from the the, the construction boom when, not, when nothing is built. I think this is a good time for contemplation and we can really think about the best ways, you know, how to how to organize the process in future. Because um, the building and what concerns a sort of dying city, 
or the city that is falling apart. Well, residential areas are very well connected transport-wise, and they have their fun cultural function and, and, and commercial function. And uh, the, 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 the suburbs or, or, or the villages that have been built, built outside Riga will eventually die out because of lack of transport connections and you know because of lack of the essential function. So I think that the city should sort of develop the things that we already have, the, 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 the areas that are already inhabited. So, so and the, 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 the building density could be increased there. Yamanta, I read your Yamanta, I read an excerpt of your presentation. You didn't really underline that in your presentation, but one of the strategies that you're proposing is the urban agriculture. So inside these microrayons or the residential areas, could you elaborate on this idea? So should we promote agricultural activities in Port Sims or what? Uh, yeah, I think um, uh, I think agriculture would be one of the solutions uh, to bring people together, actually, uh, because um, if we look, we look historically uh, after the Second World War, uh, in I think in all Baltic states, um, people were cultivating, um, uh, were growing vegetables in their yards. So it's. It's something which is uh, close to our culture, and uh, maybe like for Western Europeans, it's something like it's just coming into fashion in Western Europe. But it's something what is uh, very common, I think, in in our culture. Uh, so I think um, that would be a solution, or who, which um, would actually bring inhabitants together, and maybe. Uh, from that, uh, it would develop in, into something more, and uh, then inhabitants would also like uh, would participate into development of these abandoned public spaces. Thank you, Medina. I think it's not out. The processes that are at the moment taking place place and I, I, I sort of tried to fast forward the situation and sort of simulate how everything could progress and just tried to or attempted to show what could fail if you don't meet the overarching objectives to avoid uh, repeating uh, the, the, the same old things, uh, you know, to, 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 to strike balance. And we're, we're talking about, about physical improvements and I sort of played around with physical improvements and the theory that I based myself on is, well, this theory could help uh, people to avoid mistakes that we made up to now. So that probably was the main value of my research but you know you can take the, 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 the my work as a whole you can you know take some parts of it and use them but would that help us to find a common language for cooperation for collaboration well uh, there's no doubt that it can help us to answer the questions what this particular place me needs with the scale of the buildings and so on and so forth but the variables have to be defined ourselves you know this is uh, a hypothesis this is, you know, this is a hypothetical research that can assist you, uh, but you need to uh, sort of uh, localize it or customize it. Do we have any questions? No, we don't have any questions, and we have spent uh, two hours working very constructively. Thank you for the presentations. Thank you for listening, and Anna, who will succeed me sort of as the moderator, will come to announce the next session.